see. Failure is not an option. Uh, this committee is going to succeed. Failure is not an option. Sequestration ought not to be an option. Uh, our country needs us now. That, of course, was the Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and the Democratic House Minority Whip Steny Hoyer. Their predictions and assurances of success just a few months back now ring hollow. Pennsylvania Republican Senator Pat Toomey was part of the Super Committee, and he joins us now. Senator Toomey, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. Senator Toomey, I, I was looking at some charts over the last 10 years, and if you look at the cost of the two wars, Medicare Part D, the Bush tax cuts, that comes out to about $5 trillion over the past 10 years. If you extend the Bush tax cuts like you wanted to for the next decade, that adds $3.7 trillion to the deficit. How can, in good faith, you suggest that new tax revenue is not needed to offset the $15 trillion worth of deficit that we have now? Well, it's very simple. If you look at uh, the current rates that we have in place now and have had in place since 2003, so for about uh, eight years now, as recently as 2007, with the current tax rate structure that we have, we had a budget that was virtually balanced. Total deficit was about 1.2% of GDP, and that's because spending back then was about 20% of GDP. Since President Obama took office and the Democrats took control of Congress, spending has simply exploded. It's serial bailouts, massive stimulus bills, bloated appropriations, to the point where government is now closer to 25% of GDP. That's a 25% increase in the size of government overnight. That's the problem. We have a spending problem. The president even acknowledged that the health care portion of the mandatory spending is the real driver of this problem. That's true. You could double everybody's income taxes tomorrow, and we would still be running a $300 billion deficit. But Senator, of course, you'd also me, Senator, destroy the Senator, economy. Excuse me. Senator, federal revenue as a share of the overall economy now is at its lowest level since 1950. Sure. If you look at our chart, no, yeah. if you look at the chart under sure. the President Obama, the extension from 2009 to 2017, Obama policies are going to cost the nation $1.44 trillion, as opposed to the Bush policies, which were $5.07 trillion. How can you say that it's a spending problem, not a revenue problem? We have our lowest share of, the, of, of federal right. revenue and, since and, 1950. And so let me, and we so have I will look. 44 under Obama, 5.07 okay. under Bush. How is so, it a so spending problem, so let me, problem? Let me explain it for you. We had a recession. We're still in a very weak economy. We have a very high unemployment rate. And when you have that, you always have a reduction in the revenue that's going to come in. The revenue the government collects is a leveraged function of the strength of the economy. When this economy comes back, if we would ever have some policies that would encourage that, we would have a reversion to the historical mean of revenue. The problem is the spending is at a much higher level, and it's going to continue to grow. Unfortunately, in this discussion, the Democrats were not willing to address the real drivers of these medium-term uh, deficit problem, the health care spending that the president has acknowledged. Obamacare was completely off the table. Any meaningful reforms of Medicaid, completely off the table. Uh, Long-term solutions for Medicare, including bipartisan proposals unacceptable. So uh, this is the problem that we had in this committee. It's a problem that we still continue to have. Senator Toomey, you were quoted by the Patriot News, a local Pennsylvania paper, as saying, quote, I pushed my conference as far as we possibly could. We put revenues on the table, which I didn't think we should. Of course, you offered a plan which would have had $250 billion worth of revenue over the next decade. That is after extending the Bush tax cuts. With the deficit at $15 trillion, was $250 billion in new revenue really the best that you could do or the Republicans on Capitol <clears throat> Hill could do? Uh, I don't think we should be damaging our economy with some job-crushing tax increases. I know my colleagues on the other side think that that's exactly what we should do, huge tr million, uh, trillion dollar minimum tax increase. I think that's a very bad idea. You know, we start from fundamentally different premises. My, my colleagues on the other side and the people on the committee, I think, negotiate in good faith, but they're advocates for a much bigger government a government that occupies a larger segment of our society, uh, spends much more as a percentage of our economy, controls more of our economy. And, and you know, if that's the vision we're going to have of a European-style, really very large uh, government, then you'd need bigger taxes to fund that. I don't think that's the right solution for America. I know it will reduce the size of our economy over time. It'll inhibit innovation, it'll reduce opportunity, it'll lower our standard of living. So I want a government that lives within its means, and we don't need a giant tax increase to fund that.
Yesterday, Senator Portman said that in order for this deficit situation to be figured out, both sides are going to have to do something that, 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 that's painful. And if you look at the Medicare costs, if you look at Medicare, there will be 47 million people on it in 2010, 80 million people by 2030. It, it could possibly, by 2035, go up to 50% of GDP. So Medicare and entitlements are definitely the problem, as, are the, as is the revenue, since we have it at the lowest part of, of, of the share of the overall economy since 1950. What are the tough choices that you feel Democrats and Republicans can feasibly make on Capitol Hill in 2012? And are we slated just to, for this to be an election issue and we kick the can down the road again? You know, it's hard to say what tough choices we will be able to make. Uh, I, I worked really hard to try to get some tough decisions made in this committee, and obviously we were not able to bridge this, uh, this big gap. Uh, you know, one small silver lining in this is we certainly identified many, many programs that have either outlived their usefulness or have gotten bloated or otherwise inappropriate. So there are plenty of items to choose from. And while we couldn't roll them into one big package and, and get a consensus and get that passed, maybe we can pass some of them individually. Uh, I think we need to reconfigure the uh, $1.2 trillion in uh, sequestered spending cuts that's scheduled to occur. Uh, I think we've developed a long menu of choices to choose from in, in getting there. Senator Toomey, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. The super failure on Capitol Hill sent stocks tumbling yesterday. We'll get a preview of the day on Wall Street next. Plus